The European payments market is driven by legislative change, with regulators seeking to stimulate innovation and competition in the interest of European consumers and businesses, whilst ensuring risks are kept under control, the change is relentless. In June, the European Commission announced a raft of new measures which, when implemented, will fundamentally transform the way payments are made across the EU. Keep watching for an introduction to everything you need to know. I'm Kjeld Hermann, and this is PSD3 in 100 seconds. The Commission is proposing that PSD2 is split in two different legislative instruments, a payment service directive, which needs to be transposed into national law, and a payment service regulation, which applies directly to European subjects. The directive will deal with the authorization process for payment institutions, whereas the regulation would establish the framework for these payment service providers to operate in. By making this framework a regulation, the European Commission seeks to harmonize the way the rules are enforced across the Union. The European Commission aims to amend the Settlement Finality Directive to allow payment institutions to have direct access to clearing systems. This would allow non-bank payment service providers to maintain central bank accounts and to access both Eurosystem and private market clearing infrastructures as direct participants, no longer needing to rely on commercial banks for settlement accounts. When a similar change was introduced in the United Kingdom, this posed some challenges, as the Bank of England was insufficiently prepared to deal with bankruptcies, which are unfortunately more common with payment institutions than with banks. This regulation, providing for a harmonized European approach, doesn't only prevent form shopping, but also grants additional powers to regulators to monitor and halt activities that pose risks to European payment service users. Non-compliance with strong customer authentication requirements could now lead to fines up to 10% of global turnover. And complying with SEA is set to become even more challenging as there are new requirements, including the provision of methods that don't rely on smartphones. Additional changes brought about by this legislative package include a requirement to provide confirmation of payee services for all payment methods, whereas this was only limited to instant payments in the IP legislation. More about that here. The Commission is cracking down on authorized push payment fraud, requiring banks to quickly reimburse clients if there were indicators present that could have allowed the bank to identify the transaction as suspicious. It's great news for European consumers, but we hope this doesn't lead to irresponsible or risky behavior. In addition to all of this, the Commission is seeking to introduce the Financial Data Access Legislation, also known as FIDA. This would extend open banking requirements beyond payment accounts, mandate uniform interface standards, and make way for fees to be introduced. That's it for 100 seconds.